I see you and I hear you. I've been reading all of the comments that you guys are leaving in every single episode and you guys want me to get OP. Getting OP is going to take several steps, so let's see what we have to do in order to get OP today. I am going to be honest, I think this is going to be a two video process because getting OP takes a lot of time. Today's video is going to mostly have the preparations that we need to go through in order to actually get completely OP by the next episode. But don't get it twisted, this is still a very important episode. A lot of very important and crucial things are going to be happening today. In fact, the very first thing being that it's finally time that we actually start building a freaking shop because one of the best ways to get OP is by taking the resources from the other players on the SMP. So if we make a shop, and as you can see, I have claimed this plot, then people will be paying me their diamonds and their resources, which means I will get richer and richer and richer. So with that being said, as you guys may or may not know, because we have made an iron farm that is basically generating uh, like around 1000 iron per hour. But the more important part is that we're also generating nuggets of experience. And you can see my backpack here is completely full with all of these resources. Uh, and I just organized it. That's why it looks a little bit weird now. But you can see we have so much nuggets of experience, so much iron. So I'm excited to finally make a little bit of money off of that. And so the very first thing I need to do is actually build the shop. But guys, it's going to be very, very interesting. Interesting. As you guys may or may not know, in most Minecraft SMPs, when there's a shop, there's just a chest and then there's a sign and it says, ooh, one diamond for this, you know? But today we are going to be utilizing the power of create to actually make a functional shopping system. And honestly, it's really hard to describe how it all works. So I think it's best if we just kind of get started on the actual building process and then once it's actually time to do the create contraptions, then maybe I'll try to explain it for you guys. So let's get started on some building. During the speed build, I would like to start off by saying that I apologize if this video feels rushed or short in any type of way. The past week has been extremely busy and for those of you who follow my live streams, you would know that my birthday just passed. In fact, the day that I recorded all of this, it was officially the day of my birthday, September 9th. And don't get me wrong, I love Minecraft Infinite, so it's not like this was any hassle for me. But I definitely had a harder time preparing for this video just because of the lack of time that I had. However, I can guarantee you that this video is still epic and I have some fun things coming up for the next one. And although I do have the next video mostly planned out, there's still a lot to work on. So if you have any recommendations, don't hesitate to comment them because I really do read every single comment and I get excited to respond to you all. Anyway, back to the video. All right, I mean, I think this is looking quite beautiful. But of course, we are missing basically the entire inside. Um, <laughs> and like I was explaining earlier, the inside is going to be a bit of a mechanism. It's not going to be just straight up, you know, put, putting diamonds in a chest and then grabbing whatever you want from in there. There will actually be a request system. So you put in the amount of diamonds you want to pay and then it'll spit out all of the iron that you should get based off of how much diamonds you put in. So we're gonna be doing some create work now, which means I'm having to dig down a little bit to make sure that we have space for all of the contraptions that we are about to build. The main thing that I want to do is I basically want the output to be through a shoot. So it'll be like this and the output comes out right here. And the input is going to be right here, I believe. Hopefully that is exactly what I initially planned for. And what we're gonna use is these brass funnels and we're just gonna stack them on each other like this. But first we need to make sure that um, we actually place another barrel down here. So it's gonna be space in between and then barrel there. Now, if we place another one of these funnels just like that, it should be working just fine. Now, the main thing is we need to make this face down. And of course, uh, that picked up our brass funnel. So uh, we got that back. But what matters most is what happens here. In here, we are going to set a filter for a diamond, but we are going to say exactly one diamond. So for every one diamond that goes down, we are going to have to use an observer to basically say, hey, 
this was triggered, let's send iron that's going to be inside of this barrel from here up the chute. And so in order to do that, we basically need to also lock this funnel. We're gonna have this funnel basically be the one that spits out the iron so that it only triggers whenever it senses one diamond go through. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, I'm gonna try to make sense of it all as we continue to build. So I use these pulse extenders. The fun thing about these pulse extenders is you can click them on. So now this is going to be enabled. So that's basically what we're going to be using to keep this funnel enabled at all times. So quite literally, we just flick it like that and now that's on. And what's going to happen is with this redstone, we are going to have a redstone here. And then like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna have a smart observer like that. So this smart observer is going to know when something goes through. And I actually think we need to change this timing to see six takes because of the way that everything works. But uh, I'll try to do this very quickly. If I throw this in, you can see it turns on and then um, basically disables that, which means this will also then turn on. I know it's all a little confusing, but I swear once it all works, it will make sense. Now, the important thing here is we're going to set a filter to only take out iron. And of course we need to have this arrow pointing out. And then we also need to say it needs to take out exactly a stack of iron, which is pretty freaking cool. So for example, if I put in all of this iron in here and I guess keep this extra, I will plop in one diamond and you can see a stack of iron has fallen right there. So that's perfect. I'm glad that works exactly as intended. Now the problem then becomes we need to find a way to actually, you know, get all of our iron from down there to up here. So actually, technically that won't be too difficult because we can just use mechanical belts and that is exactly what I'm going to do. I guess the only annoying thing about it is we do need to have power now. So that means we need to find a, or make a little bit of space rather to um, basically add a water wheel down here. And I don't know if I actually brought a water wheel. So let's go ahead and make one real quick. And also I did forget to mention one thing. Encased fans, if you actually place them so that they're facing up just like this, and you have them blowing air, it'll actually make the chutes transfer items upwards, which is really, really cool. Of course, the important part now is that we have a funnel just like this that actually imports the iron up. And then this is also where we would have our mechanical belt, which I believe just needs to be a couple, just a block off just like that. And then we connect it just like so. Of course, we don't need to set a filter to this because the only thing that will be falling out is the stack of iron. But again, this is, this is something we need to power and this is something we need to power. So now is the time that we have to place down our water wheel. Alrighty, so I think the way I'm going to make this work is uh, actually we're just gonna leave it like this. There we go. We can place a water down just like that and that's giving us our power. And actually I've decided I'm bringing this down one block because we do need extra space for a rotation speed controller because we want to make this work as fast as possible. And oh no, there is water down here. Get out of here, man. There we go. Now, I believe the only thing that matters is we place down one of these. That should be connected. And if we place this down and just crank it up, it'll look like this, which is perfect. Nice. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a vertical gearbox. I'm gonna remove this to make sure I know where it's facing. So yeah, right now it's sucking in, which is actually really annoying. <laughs> So we basically need to find a way to make this go backwards. I wonder if we could actually make it work with chain drives, just like that. Yep, perfect. Okay, now we know that this is blowing air, so we can put that back down. Good, 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 good. And now we just actually need to make this work, and I think uh, that doesn't work, but we could probably make it work with a vertical gearbox. If we just go like that, there we go. That's actually moving as fast as it possibly can. Oh my gosh, that is so fast. <laughs> so there you go. You can see that that's working. Um, let me see if this works. I guess I guess we just need to 
make sure we stockpile up real quick. So let me do that. So if we just go in here and click in a bunch of this iron, let me do, let me just do a couple more stacks. Also, I did bring this tier upgrade, so we can actually, yeah, we can just do this, and now it's it's even stocking up even more, which is fantastic. Okay, perfect. And now the final thing for the sake of making this look even better is to actually use these little Nixie tubes and a smart tub server and a display link to make this look as good as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically set one iron for a filter in here. And then we're going to we're going to place Nixie tubes around. Oh, okay, that is not how I wanted it to look. Um let me go grab some materials real quick from home. Basically, I wanted to do a shelf like this and then place two Nixie tubes like that. I'll place a sign eventually that says, you know, how much iron in stock we have. But if we just connect this and then place it here and then we say list matching items or no, amount of matching items. There we go. We click that and it says, why does it say 512? We definitely have more than 512. Is it maybe because of the tier upgrade? Oh, hold on. This might actually be an issue. Hold on. It shows 65 there. And then, okay, let me take off this tier upgrade. And then I guess let's just place back a bunch of iron again. There we go. Now it's showing 961. And I do think that's correct. I'm going to be honest. I do think that that is correct. So the tier upgrade isn't working with this, which is um, a little unfortunate, I will admit. To be fair, I can't imagine being bought out that quickly. But uh, the, yeah, I mean, that that's a little bit unfortunate. At least this is showing the correct number here. And then just to make sure, I'm going to save this first item as always a diamond so that, you know, we always get um, a one slot of diamonds because that is where our payment will go. So now we just need to test it. I mean, if we just put four diamonds in here, it'll do one, two, three, four. Wait, was that five? No, that was four. Okay, cool. <laughs> I got worried for a second. I thought it was actually five. And there you go. I mean, it should work as intended now. So let me test it again with five. We're going to get one, two, three, four, five. Looks so sick. Oh my gosh. I love how this came out. Of course, um, I was always planning on putting a trapdoor here so you don't see all of the air. But just to make sure, let's go ahead and put in some diamonds to make sure that it all works again. So let's do two diamonds and we should get one, two. There we go. And yeah. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I was always planning on doing some sort of like table you know, sort of thing here. And you know what? I'll, I'll get to the decoration stuff soon. But for now, I am just happy that this is actually functioning because I was having a lot of trouble making this work in the first place. There we go. And actually, you know what? I actually was going to put a fake trap door here, which I didn't bring with me, but basically a fake trap door uh, or rather framed trapdoor so I can get down here whenever I need to uh, in case anything ever clogs up or if we just need to restock our beautiful shop here. But for now, it should be good as it is and it's showing us how much iron we have. I did have more things that I wanted to do with this Nixie tube. In fact, I wanted to place Nixie tubes right here at the entrance so you could know exactly what's going on in this store. I mean, obviously we have a hanging block of iron, so that might give you an idea, but you know, sometimes it's not that obvious. So if we actually whip out this clipboard and we just type in iron in here, <laughs> that that is not how you type it, oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. And we just click it on there it shows it on the screen just like that. And honestly, I really like how it looks. It's perfect that it's four letters long. And overall, I just, I just, I just think it's perfect. With that being said, you might be wondering where the rest of the shop is, AKA where I am going to be selling the experience. Now that I was thinking it would be behind a wall. So I think I'm gonna add a wall here and then the shop part would be on this side. So I would basically have to do everything that I just did down here all 
over again. But you know, I've already walked you guys through it one time. I really don't feel like I need to do it again, but I am gonna be doing something a little bit different for this one. So I think what I want to do is I wanna build it first and then I wanna show you guys how it works. Okay, so I have made the second part of the shop and you can see it's actually a lot more compact. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know why I didn't do this for both, um, but I think it just looks really fun seeing the iron kind of pop up. But anyway, the way that this shop works is that it's going to wait for a payment of three diamonds. Three diamonds equates to one stack of experience. The reason I did that is because I feel like experience is, is a little bit more valuable than iron. So I just wanted to make it a little bit more expensive. So I'm gonna place five down. It's only going to transfer the three down and then the two stayed because it only accepts three. And then in here is the one stack, which is fantastic. Uh, of course, I did the same thing that shows here how much we have in stock. Um, and okay, well, I, <laughs> I accidentally um, ate the experience instead of putting it in stock, but there we go. And for this one, I actually used a drawer so I can add a bunch uh, into this one uh, block basically. And then inside of here, I can add upgrades so I can you know, continue adding all of these because I don't know if you can tell, I have a lot of nuggets of experience. But anyway, that is about it for this. I mean, that's just how it works. And I mean, it's pretty simple stuff, to be honest. I actually kind of like this design a little bit more just because of how easy it is, but it actually turns out to be a lot uh, more ideal for this one, uh, at least in my opinion. Just to see the iron all pop up, I just think it's quite fun. But there's a little bit more that we have to work on. Well. First of all, I, ha I have to work on this. You, you guys can just sit there and watch. But basically, there is a little bit of more of decorations that I want to add to this entire build. And that is all something that we will eventually get to. And I'll probably just do and show you guys that later. But the bigger thing, and honestly, the thing that I've been keeping from you guys this entire video is basically my step two of getting extremely OP. Step two requires um, a lot of preparations for step three, which is something that I have talked about. Basically, the preparations for step three require me making biodiesel. And in the process of actually making biodiesel, I realized that I need uh, basically renewable bones uh, because we need a lot of bone meal and therefore we need a lot of bones. There wasn't really any other way to sort of automate uh, making bone meal aside from milling bones. So what I decided is I would go down into the caves and look for a skeleton spawner. Now, as you guys know, we have the carry on mod. So as you guys can see, uh, let me find a mob. Uh, sure, the skunk. Um, why is this here? I don't know. But as you can see, if he doesn't run away from me, uh, I can pick him up. And there you go. Uh, it kind of took up my entire screen, but I can pick up mobs just like that. And spawners um, are actually very similar because they are considered block entities. So I'm actually able to do the exact same thing even with chests. So if I place down a chest and I do the carry on mod uh, thing, just like that, um, I am moving it around and then we can just chuck it down. So the idea is we go look for a skeleton spawner and pick it up and bring it home. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but behind me, I have already carved out a large portion of my floor here for specifically the skeleton spawner. But not only did I carve out this hole, I also carved out an entire tunnel down here that connects to all of the storage that is uh, all of this. Um, and oh my goodness, it is clogged up, holy cow. So. Uh, anyway, the reason I'm doing this, and honestly, guys, bear with me because this is going to be a lot of information, and um, also, I guess with that, it will also explain why I have been growing potatoes and I didn't tell you guys about it. But TLDR, this is all for creating the biodiesel, and now I'm going to do the long explanation, so hold on to something because it's a lot. So in order to create biodiesel, I saw that you have to mix in a basin and a mechanical mixer both ethanol 
and seed oil slash plant oil, which are made the exact same way. We just basically have to decide on one. It doesn't really matter. And I mentioned the bones part, so I'll talk about ethanol first. In here, in order to make ethanol, we need to combine bone meal with something that is fermentable. And one of the options was potatoes. And potatoes grow pretty quickly, I would say. And when you harvest one potato, you usually get more than one. So I just figured it would be the best option. So that's the first part of the craft. The second part of the craft is the plant oil. So if we go into the plant oil, you can see that all you have to do is compact seeds of any kind and it will compact into plant oil. Of course, majority of those ingredients are literally being grown and um, stored literally in this chest for now. And then we also have loads in here. And then we also have loads in here. And oh my gosh, we're running out of storage for all the things we have. But with that being said, I basically wanted to transfer all of these items and things and basically process all of the things um, all the way over here, because in here, this is where the skeleton farm is going to be. We're going to be picking up a bunch of bones. And then that is where I want the bones to be milled into bone meal. And honestly, because our beautiful boiler is right here, I wanted to do everything that required power all the way over here because it's just, I mean, easy access, as you can see. With that being said, I still need to figure out how to transfer all of those items from there all the way to this general area. And then, of course, we need to process all of the things here. But I think all of that processing stuff might be a next episode type of thing. Regardless, <laughs> this all kind of just leads back to uh, the first point, which is we need to find a skeleton spawner. And um, that is basically going to be my duty for the next while. I have no idea how long it's going to be because I think I have found a few spawners and I think I have broken them all. So that was not very smart of me to do. So anyway, uh, I guess it's time to go exploring once again. To start my adventure, I needed to refuel my jetpack because when using the carry-on mod, it gives the equivalent of like slowness three so my double jump artifact and my jetpack would come extremely handy it honestly took so much exploring before i found any sort of hope in fact it took me listening for the sounds of skeletons to finally find a spawner within the walls so anyway enjoy the montage and the music as you watch me struggle throughout the caverns and then eventually make my way home Right. The good news is, is uh, we got it. And there it is. It looks beautiful. It looks awesome. Now we just need to actually build everything around it, of course. The 
medium news is that that took freaking forever, so that's not cool. And the bad news is, is I haven't actually crafted all the things that I need, um, so I need to get to work. Okay, I think I've actually gathered all the things I need now, and the main thing is really this nozzle, or however you're supposed to pronounce that. And also I'm realizing I might have to move that back one block. Basically, this is all going to be going in one more block, so we might, we might be needing to move the spawner. Oh, actually, no, it's, it's still centered. Well, basically, let me explain how this nozzle works. It's actually pretty interesting, and it's a little bit dangerous, actually, because every time I've tested it, I've been in creative mode, but now that I'm in survival mode, it could actually be quite detrimental if we are not careful about how we use this. The nozzle basically attaches to an encased fan, just like this, and anything that is in the way of this nozzle in a big radius will get sucked in or pushed out based on the direction of how the fan is pushing or blowing rather. The only concern is I need to make sure that we line this up properly because I'm, I, it, you need to be in line of sight of it basically. So um, maybe something like this and then like this. But of course, the way that we're going to make all of this work is we want that as soon as all of the skeletons spawn in, they get sucked towards this nozzle. And then we're going to have a bunch of drills just ready to absolutely obliterate anything and everything that gets in the way. This is around the shape that I was aiming for. So again, this is very dangerous for me to be doing in survival mode because of course, if I fall into this, then um, I will be absolutely getting destroyed by these drills. So we need to be sure that we are extremely careful from here on out. And honestly, I think we could push this one in so that it's inside of the wall, technically. I would say kind of like this. In fact, we would actually need to put this in the freaking floor. This is so confusing. I think this might be the best shape. Well, I ran out of blocks, but basically something like this. Also, we have to make sure that we have these slabs around so that the skeletons don't actually spawn on top of that. So it should be something like this. And one slab up here. There we go. Now, I think I need to place these around so that they actually get pushed inwards, but... I'm not completely sure, but I'm just gonna shape it kind of like this. In any case, the only way that we'll be able to test this is once we turn everything on. And that is honestly what I fear most, but we have to do it. Oh, actually, before we power on all of this, there's one more important thing that I did forget. And that is we need to have our pickup system, which I think I'm just gonna put right here. And of course, it's just gonna be a barrel with a magnet upgrade and a stack upgrade. Of course, we only want it to pick up bones and probably arrows because um, I guess that's, that's everything a skeleton should be dropping. Okay, now I guess we should figure out how we're actually gonna connect all of this. Of course, we want to use power from here. The only problem is figuring out how we're gonna get power from there to down there. And the only reason it is a problem is because we have a bunch of lava generating down here. So it's a little bit close. But anyway, I guess we could just borrow off of these two arms. So the new idea is we're just gonna have it facing down, going down just like this. It's a little intrusive and I will admit I had original plans for making a staircase here, but I guess we're just gonna have to deal with not having that staircase anymore. Regardless, we should now be able to link this up pretty easily. Now that we'll have power going down just like this. And honestly, a really good way to transfer power is just by using mechanical belts. Bink, and now we just connect it there, perfect. And what we're gonna do is then do another belt like this and okay, perfect. Oh geez, I mean, this is where things are gonna get a little bit complicated in my brain uh, just to make sure that this all works, but here we go. First, we have to make sure that this is actually going to be in a pole configuration. So let's see if we do that. This is indeed pulling. You can see it's pulling me right now and I actually can't really get away. But it's not pulling hard enough. Like I'm standing here just fine. Which means 
we might actually need a speed controller to add more power to all of this. And oh my goodness, it's pulling me from this side as well. Let's go and see what we can do with this. If we remove all of this and we change this to a gearbox, now we're gonna be able to mess with everything. So there we go. And honestly, I don't think it would hurt to make more chain drives and just connect it all the way over here. That actually should be possible. Let me try that real quick. Let me make sure these are all in a line like that. All of that is connected. We have our two gearboxes that we can connect just like so. And according to the particles, you can see it is going inwards. So it would be pulling us in. So we do need to be very, very careful um, if we go to the other side of this, because we will most certainly die to our drills if we go and we are not careful. Now we just need to actually connect everything down here. So if we just do that, that connects these drills down here. Here we go. All of those are connected now. And of course, now all we need to do is connect these friends as well. And of course, this can also connect. It slows it down a little bit, but that's okay. We're just gonna connect all of these and everything officially works. For the sake of not dying, I'm going to disconnect everything um, because we still need to finish the floor and everything in here. Well, we actually don't need to do anything special to the floor. We can just leave it as it is. And then if we just connect this and then close this off, I think we should be good. I'm not gonna connect it again just yet because uh, I'm a little concerned about getting dragged in from the very top. Like if I'm standing here, I could totally get sucked down and that would be very, very scary. So let's build our outer shell real quick. And just like that, we have our tinted glass. And honestly, we can just fill this all in like so. Now, I guess just to make this look like it has a little bit of depth, maybe we should do like cup, cut deep slate brick walls. I don't know if this prevents light from going in, but I feel like this is just gonna make it look kind of nice. Just cause it gives it a little bit of depth. It doesn't look like it's just, you know, an entire wall of the same block over and over and over again. There we go. Now, I guess the main concern now is we have to make sure that things will actually spawn in there, even though we have a mega torch. I think it should work because I tried testing it in a creative world and it was working there, but I don't know, sometimes things break. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I am going to break my torch and I'm gonna pick it up because I want it. Oh my God, you scared me. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it spawned in. That's good, that's a good sign. That means it is spawning stuff in. Now the final piece of the puzzle is let's connect this and let's see if, uh, <laughs> if the skeleton that's in there dies. Just like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we heard that die instantly. And then in here we can check, we got bones and we got arrows. <sighs> it's finally happening. It's actually, actually, officially happening. We are getting stacked. You can hear the skeleton is dying. We are gaining resources by the minute. Um, so this is fantastic. This is really good for us. Now what it comes down to is we have to make sure we kind of make this look a little bit prettier. And of course, we still have a lot of work to do on top of this, which is going to do all of the processing stuff for basically what we'll be processing our plant oil, our ethanol, and then therefore making us infinite amounts of biodiesel. And then these blaze burners are going to be superheated and basically generating, I think it's what, like double the amount amount that it's generating now let me go let me go grab my goggles real quick and check yeah so right now we're generating 147,000 stress units if we are able to bonk this all the way to the maximum level i think it's gonna be pretty much double exactly this and uh, i am gonna be honest i'm definitely gonna be adding a muffler block in here so that we don't hear the skeletons dying but i am quite content with how this all came out last but not least i did want to show you guys the shop because well, I mean, it, it, I finalized it. I, I did all of the detailing um, and you can see we even added a typewriter here, basically like the like the checkout, you know, cashier. Um, and then here I also added this. I didn't have enough glow ink to make this glow, um, but that's okay. I will do that at some point. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. We, 
we've basically finished the shop. I'm missing a couple doors, but that's okay. We also need to connect the path, but all of this is basically off camera work. A lot of the, the necessities are finally done and I'm really, really happy with, first of all, um, how it looks, but second of all, how it's making the entirety of Spawn look. It's just, it's really starting to come together and, I, and I'm really satisfied with how it all looks. Of course, regarding um, our factory, I am super happy with everything that we are generating, but yeah, trust me guys, I, I more than anyone else want to make sure that everything starts, you know, working together and, and we get everything working together. But I, I know it should have happened in this episode, but unfortunately it's just been a very busy week and you guys already know the spiel. I don't need to tell you again. But with that being said, I apologize for the shorter episode, but I appreciate you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.